video we're going to replace the element in the oven. This is a built under oven and the heating element has actually stopped working. So this is a fan oven so when you switch it on the fan actually works but the oven is not getting hot. So I'm just going to switch that off. So as you can see at the moment the oven still has power going to it so we need to make sure that it is completely dead. Somewhere near the cooker you'll find an isolation switch like that. So we're just going to flick that to the off position. So as you can see it's not in an ideal position, it's right in the corner. To remove the doors you need to do is open it. All we need to do is get hold of the metal tab there and pull that up. And we need to do that at both sides. You can then lift up the door and you can remove it from the oven. And then remove the trays and if you look at the back of there there's a metal plate which we need to remove and there are four screws which need removing and as you can see I've actually sprayed them already using some spray penetrant. On the side there is the identification plate and as you can see all that is worn out so we can't get the correct element that we need without removing it first. So before you go reaching for the screwdriver which will probably round off the screw immediately we need to give the screw a shock. And as you can see, that actually released quite a lot of rust. And if you're wondering why I'm going to the trouble of replacing this element, it's because it's about 40, 50 pounds for an element or 350 pounds for a new oven. But to replace this actual oven with the same make, it's actually £800. And we've actually managed to undo that one. The first one in the bottom corner has come out pretty easily. So we've got the one screw out at the bottom. It seems like the other screws aren't actually doing much. So we've actually managed to remove that, which has given us access to the elements. And if you can actually see at the back of there, a lot of the places where the screws screw into are no longer there. So because it's in such bad condition, it has actually made it easy to get that part out. To get the elements out, we need to remove those two screws and two screws at the other side. Just above the fan, there's another clip and I have looked online and it says that you need to remove the fan in order to get that out but it's actually split so I'm not going to remove the fan, the fan blade I'm just going to leave that as it is and I'm just going to split it at the top there so we now need to remove these four screws and to do that I'm not actually going to use the impact I'm actually just going to use a screwdriver with a PH to bit in it and as you can see I've actually sprayed these with some spray penetrant already so I did that about 15-20 minutes ago I've just had a cup of tea and we're now going to see if we can get these screws out and you probably heard that crack that's because it is very tight but these screws are in much better condition than the screws all in the cover on and that's why I didn't use the impact on these and as you can see they are in decent condition so when I do this I'm ensuring that I press onto the screw really hard and then turning it counterclockwise because the last thing you want to do is round the screw off so to be honest they were quite easy I do have to admit that it is very difficult filming this uh, even getting in here just to do the work so hopefully we'll have an equal look at this side, getting these two out. That's a lot tighter. And they are really tight. So I'm just going to give those a little spray. And we'll leave that for another 10 minutes and then we'll have another go. Before we go any further, I'm just going to bend that clip up there so that we can actually get the element out.
So we'll now try again. So we've had spray penetrant on there, we've also shocked it. That one was very tight. And the last one is so tight that I'm actually going to have to use the impact, which I really didn't want to do, but I don't really have a choice. Try a smaller drill bit and see if we can drill straight through that and remove the head. As you can see, we took the head off the screw. And the clip at the top there is actually broken. So that's all just come away. It's funny when you're watching repair videos online because they always make this kind of thing look so easy, but let me tell you, it isn't. So we've now got the element free. We just need to pull it through the holes at the back there. There we go. So we've now got the element out. But I have to say that is a bit of a pain. And unfortunately, we are gonna to have to remove the fan blade in order to get the clip back on at the top there. So that's another job we can do. So before we go any further, we're gonna take a picture of the wiring to ensure we get them the correct way around when we get the new element. And I'm just gonna shut a piece of cardboard down the side there. and then the wires aren't touching the side of the oven. And then I'm gonna push another piece of cardboard in alongside that, and that will stop the two wires from being pushed back into the cavity of the oven. Because if that happens, we'll actually need to remove the oven from its aperture and remove the back from the oven to get them back on. Now grip the spare connector and pull that off. And then the same with the other one. And remember, don't pull the wires. So now we need to remove the fan. Obviously, if your top bracket is not broken, you're gonna to have to remove the fan in order to get the element out in the first place. Now apparently that is a left-handed thread, so we need to turn that clockwise, which should undo it. So I've got the ratchet there with a 10 millimeter socket. I've also got a piece of wood to jam the fan. And that should enable us to undo it. And then I'm just gonna use an extension bar. Given that I sprayed, the washer doesn't seem to want to come off, so let's try it with a pair of long nose pliers. So that's the anti rotation washer. I've sprayed that with some spray penetrant, and unfortunately, the fan blade does not want to release from the motor shaft. It is a bit difficult because you don't really want to go gripping it with mole grips in case you damage the thread. But if you could grip that with something and turn the actual fan blade, you would probably get it loose. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a little bit of heat to the fan blade using a blowtorch. Well, I'm not using a tremendous amount of heat. I've got the blowtorch on very low. So I'm just heating around the fan blade. I'm trying not to heat up the heat shaft of the motor. So the fumes are going to be quite bad from this, obviously, because I've been spraying spray penetrant. So we're just going to heat that up for a couple of minutes and hopefully that will expand and that will enable us to pull it away from the motor shaft. You 
just going to put the nut back on there. And then I can actually use that to press on. To get the fan off, I gripped the shaft using the mole grips, but further back on the shaft so that the mole grips would not damage the threads. There's actually a flat bit on there, so it's not that difficult to grip it. Once I've done that, I then rotated the shaft. And then once I've done that a few times, it actually enabled me to pull it straight off. Like so. So that just pops off. And then we can get the last screw up there. So I've just been to my local appliance shop, which is Darwin Domestics. I will put a link to their Facebook page in the description. Darwin Domestics is where I go when I can't actually fix an appliance. And sometimes I just can't be bothered, so it's easier to get them to fix it. They do an absolutely fantastic job at a really good price. So that is the replacement element. So now all we need to do is connect on the two spade connectors at that end, fix that back in with the screws and then replace the fan. And in the video I actually tried bending up that clip to remove the element, but luckily the clip was broken. So I managed to remove it with the fan blade in position. But in most instances, you are going to have to remove the fan blade to get to that screw before removing the element. And this was an absolute bargain, it was just £30 and I also picked up a spur bulb at the same time for the oven. So we now just need to plug this in and the red and white wire was on the inside terminal. And the other wire was on the other terminal. So now we've got those on, I can now remove the cardboard. And we can carefully feed the element back through the hole. Once we've done that, we can then push that back where it needs to be and we can insert the new self-tapping screws. And we'll just get that started. We won't actually tighten it up yet. Then move on to this side. So now we've got them all in, we can now tighten up all the screws. We're not going to go mad when we do this because we don't want it to be difficult to remove the next time. Obviously we've got the screw there where we had to drill the head off and that one will not be replaced but it will be absolutely fine with the other four screws in. We can now knit this one up. So I'm now going to push the fan blade back on. Let's put that on there like that. And then we can put the nut on, remembering that it's a left-handed thread. So normally this would be the way that you would undo something. need to nip that up, you don't need to go mad because it will actually tighten when it's rotating. I've now brought this plate out to the garage. Obviously these four holes 
are no longer going to fix this plate back in position because they'll actually rust it away at the back. So we're going to drill four more holes, approximately 20 millimeters away from the existing holes. And I have got some new self-tapping screws there. We can now put that in position in the oven. There are still two tabs at the top there. Once that's in, I can then spot through there using a smaller diameter drill bit, maybe two millimeters, and then we can drive the self-tapping screws in. So I'm now just gonna drill one of the holes. I'm just going to place a screw in there. Now I've done that, I can now drill the other three holes. Obviously you might not need to do this, you might be able to get your screws out and reuse the holes. We can then take the door, we can push that back into position. and then simply fold over the tabs. And that is the job completed. We now just need to switch the electric back on. Before we can use the oven, we need to set the time. So we simply press that button and then set the correct time on the clock. This can actually solve a lot of problems. Sometimes if there's a power cut your oven will stop working and that is because the clock needs to be set before you can actually use the oven. So I'm going to switch that on. You can see that the light's working. The fan's obviously working, you can hear that. And straight away you can feel that that is actually getting hot. So we're now just going to leave that on for a while and that will burn off any of the spray penetrants etc what I've used. We'll leave that on for 30 minutes or so and then let it cool down before we use it to do any cooking etc.